I rise today to speak about the role nuclear energy can play in moving our country toward a more secure energy future. For uh, some news that a uh, Udall is speaking favorably about nuclear power will come as a stark and p perhaps uh, unpleasant surprise. But I also believe that uh, public and expert opinion on the risks and benefits of nuclear power has changed. Mr. President, the environmental and security challenges uh, tied to energy that we faced in the 1970s when that decade closed in the shadow of Three Mile Island have changed significantly. When my father, Mo Udall, campaigned for president in the New Hampshire primary in 1976, and the presiding officer remember that, remembers that era, and when he was asked about the controversial Seabrook nuclear facility, no one had climate change on their list of environmental concerns. Today, Mr. President, uh, more than 30 years on, we have a less parochial and more global view about the challenges of energy security, climate change, and the problems associated with carbon-based energy production. Given the economic, national security, and environmental threats that our current energy system creates, we need a comprehensive and cleaner national energy policy. In this regard, clearly nuclear energy has emerged as an important player in our search for a stable and domestic energy source that has less greenhouse gas emissions. A cleaner energy economy will spur innovation in and accelerate the shift to clean and domestic energy sources. It will create a new industrial sector employing millions of Americans in research, development, manufacture, sale, installation, and servicing of new energy technologies. And it will help reduce our dependence on foreign oil from unstable regions of the world. Moreover, like it or not, we must address the climate challenge that we face. My state of Colorado is already seeing the indirect impacts of carbon pollution in the form of a devastating bark beetle infestation that is killing our forests. Now, Mr. President, looking beyond environmental concerns and as we face perhaps our greatest economic crisis since the Great Depression, we need an all of the above solution to jumpstart our economy. That means continuing the development of renewable energy sources such as wind and solar and biomass, as well as traditional energy sources like coal, oil, and cleaner fuels like natural gas. That also means that uh, we should continue to invest in energy efficiency and cons conservation technology. And that means that nuclear energy and new nuclear power plants must be a part of the mix. Now, Mr. President, as I said earlier, a growing number of skeptics and even opponents of nuclear power are taking a second look at this industry. I count myself among them, and these are some of the reasons why. First, in the last few decades, the performance and safety record of nuclear plant operations in the United States has greatly improved. Safety is and always must be the number one priority at nuclear facilities. There's always more that we can do on safety, but the industry has built a good record and we should recognize that fact. Then there are the environmental benefits to nuclear power. Unlike fossil fuel plants, nuclear plants do not emit appreciable amounts of sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, mercury, or particulate matter. That means they cause less acid rain, and as well as fewer asthma complications and other health ailments. Further, nuclear plants release minimal amounts of carbon pollution. In fact, nuclear power plants are one of the few low-carbon, large-scale sources of baseload power that we know how to build today. And let me note, uh, Mr. President, that carbon capture and storage technology, uh, technologies at coal and natural gas plants could also potentially provide low-carbon baseload lo power at large scales, too. And therefore, it's very important that we continue to build these first commercial CCS plants and do all that we can to develop an economically viable uh, carbon capture and sequestration technology. Mr. President, I've long been a supporter of renewable energy and energy efficiency, and I will always continue to be so. But the scale of the energy cha changes we must make dictates that we be open to the widest variety of energy options, particularly those with domestic potential and those with cleaner emissions. In other words, there's no silver bullet that will solve all of our energy challenges. We're going to need in the parlance of the West, silver buckshot. In examining all the pros and cons, I've come to the view that nuclear energy is a part of that silver buckshot. 
Now, I know that uh, there are many who remain skeptical of nuclear power, including uh, good friends of mine. Nuclear power is not trouble-free. No energy source is. I hope we can all agree, however, on our clean energy goals. More jobs, greater energy security, and a cleaner environment for our children. Supporters and opponents of nuclear power share another concern in common. Neither knows for sure how much new nuclear plants are going to cost. We have a new licensing process that's never been tested. We have not ordered a new nuclear plant in three decades. Many nuclear technology components for at least the first wave of nuclear plants will likely be manufactured in other countries, and the future cost of construction materials is unknown. These uncertainties, along with others, led the National Academy of Sciences to estimate that electricity from new nuclear plants would likely cost in the range of 8 to 13 cents per kilowatt hour, which is a considerable span. Given the large potential of nuclear energy, however, I think we need to build new nuclear plants over the next decade. This first wave of new plants will go a long way towards telling us whether new plants can be built on budget and on schedule in the United States. I hope the answers are yes and yes, and that the final cost of electricity is at the lower end of the uncertainty range. I say this because if nuclear energy is to survive as a viable option, it will need to compete against other low carbon technologies in the long run. Now, some, uh, Mr. President, may object to the building of new nuclear plants before we have a long-term solution to the question of what to do with nuclear waste. It's true that we do not have a permanent solution right now. It's also true, Mr. President, that the answers about the viability, both environmental and political, of Yucca Mountain as a permanent waste facility continue to elude us. I fully acknowledge that as a member of the House of Representatives, I shared these concerns and voted accordingly. But uncertainty about a long-term and permanent solution to waste storage is not a reason to halt nuclear power. I'm confident that we have the technical capabilities and knowledge to safely and responsibly store nuclear waste for the required time periods. This is not a technology problem, but it is a challenge to find a fair and safe path forward, and I support the President's intention to appoint a Blue Ribbon Commission to make such a recommendation. In the meantime, dry cask storage provides a safe, proven option for at least 100 years. We have time to get this right, so let's not rush into anything out of a false sense of emergency. Now, uh, Mr. President, let me turn to another uh, subject uh, tied to nuclear power production, and that's reprocessing. It's been suggested that uh, we should build commercial scale facilities in the U.S to reprocess our spent fuel as France and Japan do. I don't believe that that makes sense. Why? Well, first, let me point out that the French system of reprocessing is not a comprehensive waste management strategy, and so far the benefits from that approach are fairly marginal. Uh, in other words, they haven't solved their waste challenge uh, with reprocessing. Secondly, we don't need to recycle spent nuclear fuel to enable an expansion of nuclear power in the United States and elsewhere. Uranium supplies are sufficient to support a worldwide expansion of nuclear power during this next century. Third, the international proliferation risk associated with reprocessing is a concern. The process used in France creates separated plutonium, which could be diverted for weapons production. Uh, I don't want to see separated plutonium in, in any country, but especially in some that are unfriendly to us. Uh, and let me emphasize that we're in a weaker position trying to dissuade those countries from reprocessing if we're doing it ourselves, Mr. President. So my uh, conclusion is that a near-term decision to deploy reprocessing facilities would be unwise and is also unnecessary. I do support research into advanced proliferation-resistant technologies although none of those will be ready for deployment at any time in the near future. So in general, our goal should be to keep nuclear power as low cost and proliferation resistant as possible. And to that end, today I'm introducing a bipartisan bill, the Nuclear Energy Research Initiative Improvement Act of 2009. This bill, which is co-sponsored by Chairman Bingaman and Ranking Member Murkowski, authorizes the U.S. Department of Energy to conduct research into modular and small-scale reactors, enhanced proliferation controls, 
and cost-efficient manufacturing. Mr. President, we're going to be debating uh, clean energy legislation later this Congress, and I know several of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle would like to see a strong nuclear title. I hope we can come to a reasonable compromise that advances nuclear power and allows us to firmly put a price, and finally put a price, I should add, on carbon pollution. That will give the energy sector the certainty that it needs to begin planning and building our clean energy future and to begin creating clean energy jobs. Nuclear plants today provide uh, jobs for thousands of Americans, and new plants would provide thousands more. New plants would also generate millions in tax revenues for state, local, and federal governments that are struggling with large deficits from the economic downturn. Nuclear power's energy security and environmental benefits have earned this industry an important place at the table. It's my hope that we can build some nuclear plants over the next decade to create jobs and build a cleaner, more secure uh, tomorrow. Uh, as I begin to close, Mr. President, I'd like to invite all my colleagues from both sides of the aisle to join Senator Bingham and Senator Murkowski and myself in co-sponsoring the Nuclear Energy Research Initiative Improvement Act of 2009. And uh, Mr. Mr. President, uh, before uh, I yield the floor, I want to note that uh, one of my energy fellows, uh, Matt Bowen is leaving my office to join the Department of Energy. I want to thank Matt uh, for his work in my office, including on the bill that I'm introducing today, and wish him well uh, at the Department of Energy. We've been well served as a country by Matt Bowen's uh, patriotism and, and work ethic, and we'll miss him. Uh, Mr. President, uh, with that, I yield the floor.